Today on the spot, we go on location to go fishing and we take you across the pond and check in with the GameSpot team reporting from Tokyo Game Show 2009. Speaking of Tokyo, the team behind Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 drop in for a demo of the game. We stop by the Wii Shop channel and check out the latest wares available for download. And Marty O'Donnell chats it up with Sophia Tong in our Behind the Games Meet the Composer segment. It's back to school and we gear you up with some folders and notepads with our trivia contest. All that and more, today on The Spot. Hello everyone and welcome to Today on The Spot for Tuesday, September 22nd. I'm your host Chris Waters and joining me over here is Lark Anderson. What's going on Chris? Not much man, I mean, well, no, a lot. It's busy again, it just keeps on coming. Yeah, it's, it's a crazy week this week. We've got Tokyo Game Show going on, half this office is out. That's and, true. And uh, Halo 3 Ozd is out now. <laughs> the ODST hits. ODST. Gave them the, the advanced screening last week. Yeah, yeah, we got to take a look at it with uh, Kevin Van Ord and Andre Seegers and it was good times. I played it over the weekend. Oh yeah? I'm not too much of a Halo person myself, but I really definitely enjoy the new campaign. That sounds good. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, for now, we're going to head over to the headlines and see what else is new around the gaming world. Hey everyone, it's your GameSpot News Update for Tuesday, September 22nd. I'm Tor Thorson. The 2009 game release hurt is thinned once again. Activision announced on Monday that Blur, Bizarre Creation's first title since it was acquired by, well, you know, Activision, won't come out until 2010. The reason? In a statement, the publisher said the delay was to allow more time to perfect the game's online multiplayer component, which has been described as Mario Kart meets Project Gotham Racing. No specific time window was given, so the game may avoid the first quarter of 2010, which is looking about as crowded as, well, Q4 2009 used to. In other news, the Xbox 360 Elite is now as cheap as Nintendo Wii, for the next two weeks anyway. Today, Microsoft Stealth launched a $50 rebate for the 120GB console, which costs $299 without the rebate. The rebate is not being actively promoted on Xbox.com, but if you visit the URL below, you'll get instructions on how to shave a grant on the price of any Elite you buy between now and October 5th. It's a pretty good deal, but remember, you still have to pony up for an HDMI cable and wireless adapter yourself. Well, that's it, your GameSpot News Update for Tuesday, September 22nd. For more headlines like these, head on over to news.gamespot.com. So there's a look at the latest news hitting the wire. Next up, we're gonna take a look at what's new on the Wii Shop channel. This week on the Wii Shop channel, we take a look at what's new to download for the week of September 20th. On the Virtual Console, we have Last Ninja 2. Originally published on the Commodore 64, the Mystic Shadow Warriors are back. Face your archenemy Kunuk Toki in the urban jungle and conquer him with your ninja skills. Transported to 1988 Manhattan by an unknown force, the ninja leader Amakuni must find a way to defend himself against the unknown dangers that lie before him. Last Ninja 2 is available now for 500 Wii points. New on WiiWare this week is you, me, and the cubes. Experience a unique combination of strategy and skills as you maintain a level playing field in this physics-based action puzzler. The action centers around follows. Mysterious creatures that resemble humans and have ability to balance on a playing field of 3D cubes. Guide follows through dozens of single-player stages or invite family and friends to join you in two-player cooperative mode. You, me, and the cubes is available now for 1,000 Wii points. We also have Family Tennis this week, bringing Daddy, Mommy, Sarah, and Billy back together for some hard-hitting, fast-paced tennis action. Battle it out between the happy family members as you strive for the top spot. Choose from three different modes, Elimination Match, Free Match, and Thrilling Rally. Family Tennis is also available now for 500 Wii Points. For Nintendo DSiWare, we have Clubhouse Games Express Strategy Pack. Prepare yourself for a lesson in tactics as you play through five strategy-based games in this Nintendo DSiWare version of the popular Clubhouse games. This is available now for 500 Nintendo DSi points. Finally, we have My Sims Camera, a camera application that utilizes popular My Sims characters. You can take photos and overlay 3D My Sims characters to bring them into the real world. The 3D characters can be animated, moved, scaled, rotated, and cropped. You can also draw on the photos with a stylus or use a stamp tool to add more art and style. Create a unique frame and save the photos to the Nintendo DSi camera album to share with friends. My Sims camera is available now for 200 Nintendo DSi points. Well that's all the time we have this week. Be sure to check GameSpot.com and Nintendo.com to find out all the latest releases for Wii Shop Channel. We'll see you next week. So there's some interesting stuff on the old Wii Shop Channel. Now last week we checked out some more interesting Wii stuff that's coming up in the next few weeks. 
Two games, one of which involves shooting fish and one involves shooting birds. What do you think about that? Well, we, we actually had to do some research on that and it turns out people actually do shoot fish. That's right, with with like guns and with bow and arrow. Yeah, yeah, and plus there's that whole shooting fish in a barrel thing, but I don't know if anyone ever that, I think that would make that. I would make a good mini game for this game. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing more about it, so let's take a look at that segment right now. Hey, what's up, buddy? Ryan here on location, and I have stopped off at the massive event here in San Francisco, and I am joined by Bill Schwartz. How do you, Bill? <laughs> now, you guys are showing off a couple games here today. Shimano Extreme Fishing, Rod, Bow, and Spear. You're probably asking yourself, what's so extreme about it? And it's like you said, it's Rod, it's Bow, it's Spear. You know, you start with a basic Rod fishing game, except with real intense fish fights. Not just a little line tension, fish fights. Then you go from there to bow fishing. That's where you take a bow, a Hoyt bow, a big, heavy bow. And you're either in the boat, going down into the water, or you're on a speed boat, you're going fast and the fish are jumping at you. And then if that's not enough, you get into the water, you put on scuba, you got a spear gun, and you're going after more than 50 different kinds of fish. You got alligators that are trying to get you, you got sharks that are trying to get you, and you got piranhas that are trying to get you. So it definitely lives up to the extreme fishing name then. Oh yeah, it's extreme and it's fishing. Right on. Now Shimano Extreme Fishing is coming out when? Uh, very end of this month, very early October. Right Fantastic. There. Now, uh, moving on to the Remington action that we were just trying with the duck hunt and everything. You want to tell us about that? Absolutely. Well, the game is Remington Great American Bird Hunt. All the popular kinds of North American bird hunting. So duck, grouse, pheasant, goose are in the game. Um, 60 levels, one to four players, fast playing, loads and loads of fun. Do you want to talk about some of the upgrades you get in the game? I see the dog run out there, I see the ammo bonuses and the weapon bonuses. Do you want to talk about those? We've got a whole bunch of different guns. You know, we've worked very closely with Remington. You start with basic four or five guns, and as you do better, you get more powerful guns, you get more ammunition, you get fast loading abilities. Um, we have a whole bunch of different bird calls, and that gives you more birds, faster birds. We have Rockford. Rockford is your four-legged hunting buddy. Um, he'll hang with you. More importantly, he'll go out and flush birds, and sometimes he'll flush golden birds, which give you an extra bonus. Um, a couple other little surprises, but you have to play the game to find them. Super cool. The game is Remington Great American Bird Hunt, and when's it coming out, sir? Right around Halloween. Perfect. Awesome. Well, that is it from the massive event. Uh, back to you guys on the show. With the release of Halo 3 ODST this week, we put up an in-depth interview with Marty O'Donnell, the composer on the Halo franchise, detailing his work on the series, as well as a whole lot more about video game music. Let's take a look right now. I'm Marty O'Donnell, I'm the uh, audio director of Bungie, and I'm also the composer for Bungie. I'd have to say, although they're, all the Halos are like my children, and the most current one, which is ODST, I'm very excited about because I got to really uh, do some new themes, but as I look back on all of them, I think I like the first one the best, and I think it's because it was not popular. It was unanticipated. No one thought that, you know, this little company called Bungie was, you know, really had it in them to do something as successful. And we really believed in it, and we were the only ones at the time that believed in it. And um, there was something really fun about that first foray into uh, this big space opera called Halo. And all those themes came up uh, from the beginning, and I, and I worked with them for, you know, almost nine years. So I think I have the most fond memories of Halo 1. I think in terms of the production, uh, I really enjoyed producing music for Halo 3 because we were able to even uh, rearrange and bring back some of the classic themes and get a 60-piece orchestra do, to finally do them the right way, is the way I like to look at it. So I like them all. What we did with Halo uh, ODST was we decided right from the get-go that we're going to tell a new story, have a new feel, and uh, Joe Staten pretty much came to me and said, I think we've landed on a, a different feel, which is a film noir feel. And so I'm like, oh, film noir, that's black and white, that's Venetian blinds, that's smoke, that's guys with hats that, you know, you hear their footsteps on a rainy street. And that's really what we wanted to, to evoke that kind of feeling. And if you, if you make that into a more of a uh, sci-fi universe, because it's still sci-fi, uh, it's more like Blade Runner. So it wasn't like the music to Blade Runner was an inspiration, but the feel of Blade Runner was an inspiration. Um, 
So I guess that's what it is. Film noir, I liked, you know, it's like something has to be evocative and intimate, like a, a saxophone. And so some piano, some sax. Uh, and that's not all that plays. I still have the big bombastic uh, orchestral stuff. But I, I thought, well, I'm going to move away from the choir of monks and move right into, you know, Thelonious Monk. There was a pretty good challenge for me when we had to do a, a E3 demo. I think it was in 2000. It was for Halo 2. And we were going to do a, about 10 minutes of real-time live gameplay. And the, the engine that played audio and music and so forth wasn't really stable yet. And we didn't really know how it was all going to work. And I, I wanted a big orchestral. We wanted to blow all the people away at E3. And we knew Bill Gates was going to come out and introduce it at the press conference and it was going to be on a big screen and be in surround and there was a lot of pressure on that to make that really really cool and uh, uh, it was so it was there was a sort of set up beginning which was scripted camera of the ship flying in and then Joe took over seamlessly and has played the rest of the game on stage and the music had to make a good transition there and then when the you know the jackals came out and surprised everybody the music action had to kick in and, and uh, scoring that whole thing and implementing it to play back every time uh, even though there was somebody playing the game live uh, it was a bit of a, a bit of a struggle and uh, so that was the Earth City uh, New Mombasa demo that we did and that was that was tough it was good though I liked it all right, it's time for our daily demo, but before we go into Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2, we're going to check a look at some other ninjas. Chris, what do we got going on? I am playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Smash Up right now. I'm taking on Leonardo as Raphael. Uh, I like him because he's cool, but rude, loose. I could never get those lyrics He's, he's right. the one with the toot. Yeah, he is. And uh, so I'm fighting on the back of this train in the level here. We're going through the arcade mode, which puts the turtles in like a sort of a tournament situation that, of course, the nefarious shredder eventually disrupts because that's what his that's his thing. That's, disrupting. That's his Stick. Yeah, but you uh, you know you might recognize this action if you've played Brawl. It looks similar, but there's some differences in the fighting system that I think make it kind of cool. Like uh, you know that I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted here. You know it's not easy to do these things. I'm kind of getting my butt kicked a little bit. <laughs> the levels look a lot more uh, interactive too. But uh, but you know we we got some other ninjas to take a look at too. We got Ninja Gaiden Sigma on the PlayStation 3. So why don't we just go jump right into that demo? Yes, please. Hey everybody, it's Ricardo and I'm sitting here with Yosuke Hayashi from Tecmo's Team Ninja and he is here to talk Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2. So you may remember Ninja Gaiden Sigma for PlayStation 3, well this is the sequel and it's based in part on Ninja Gaiden 2 for Xbox 360, but uh, Hayashi-san and the team have crammed a bunch of new stuff in it which we're going to look at right now. First of which is Team Mission Mode, right? Which is basically co-op. Exactly, Team Missions is co-op and it's the first in the series, the entire Ninja Gaiden series. Um, we've had a lot of our fans and players uh, wanting to play with other partners and friends, and so we were able to um, integrate this into Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 this time around. So it is co-op, it's not versus or against, it is co-op. You will be partnering up with either a friend online, or you can do team missions offline and play with uh, a character that's already in there. One of the things we noticed in the upper right-hand corner, there's that little emblem, but do you want to talk to us about that feature? Thanks for pointing that out because that is actually um, a brand new feature in Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 that is available both in this Team Missions co-op but also um, a new mode called Chapter Challenge which I think we'll be able to show you a little bit later on. What it does is whenever you see that blue icon which is the ninja headgear that Ryu is wearing and it says REC, that means that it's recording your gameplay right now and at the end of each mission, you'll have a choice uh, to save the recorded gameplay, go back to the main menu, and you'll uh, select Ninja Cinema, and that's where you will be able to see and view your own gameplay video. Now, is this something that you just keep on your PS3, or can you send it to friends for bragging rights? Totally bragging rights. <laughs> it's basically there to, um, of course, you want to view your own um, performance, but you can and will be able to share your videos online. And so when you go into the rankings board, wherever you see a user's name with that blue icon next to the name, that means that you can go and view their video 
that they have uploaded. So it, it is shareable, it's viewable um, uh, amongst other players. Very cool. Now we're seeing uh, a tag team fight against this enormous Buddha with Rachel, who we've seen in the previous games. Uh, have there been any gameplay tweaks to how she handles in, in Sigma 2? The biggest difference this time around with Sigma 2 is her weapon. And um, right now the Warhammer is showing, but she has a brand new weapon, which is a machine gun. And she is, you know, out of the three female character, uh, playable characters, she's the most sort of powerful and, and grounded and heavy, just hard hitting female character. So we've added her uh, new machine gun as a new weapon. So uh, you'll see a, a big difference in how she performs. Chapter challenges, which is a, another new feature. Can you kind of explain to us how that works? So Chapter Challenge is also a brand new mode in Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2, and you'll be able to access the mode once you clear Story Mode. Uh, basically what you do is you can go back to one of your favorite chapters, one or several of your favorite chapters, and it's a competition between other, uh, amongst other players and yourself to compete for the highest karma score. Um, you'll be able to jump into any of the chapters that you've cleared, and uh, Throughout the story mode, um, Ayane, Momiji, uh, Rachel, as well as Ryu, you are able to unlock various costumes. And uh, here we're actually showing Ayane in Chapter Challenge wearing a different costume other than her default costume. Uh, you'll be able to select their costumes as, as you unlock them. So not only in Chapter Challenge, but also the team missions mode that we showed earlier, you'll be able to choose uh, their costumes. Now, one thing that the series has been known for has been its difficulty, and if you're aiming for high karma, you need to be playing very, very well. So has there been any adjustment to the difficulty to, to let players rank up the high karma, or are they just going to have to get really good at this game? We all know, as we've been told, that Ninja Gaiden series is known for its difficulty level, yes, but um, with Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2, what we really want to offer is a, a unique gameplay experience for all levels of gamers. So if you're a first-time Ninja Gaiden uh, player, you'll still be able to, or we hope that you will still be able to manage and play throughout the game and to be able to experience, uh, such as this mode like Chapter Challenge, you don't get to access this until you clear the story mode. Um, but at the same time, the difficulty level ha levels have been set so that even the uh, most hardcore fan will be able to uh, be fully satisfied with the gameplay in Sigma 2. Now, we, we talked about the new female characters, and we're going to show off one of the, the new features of the, of the team mission, which is the ultimate ninja difficulty level. So people should probably watch fast, because we don't know how long anybody's going to last here. So. Give us a sense of how many missions that are going to be there for, for people to play together. So the number of missions in Team Missions, um, we're offering over 30, and they are actually categorized by difficulty level. So it's not um, all 30 at the same level. Um, if you want to start off in a, a more casual, uh, easier tone, then you could start off there. If you want to go up against the hardest mission, you can you know, go to the highest difficulty level and there are four or five or six plenty to choose from. So it's a wide variety of offerings of missions. And for the diehard Ninja Gaiden Sigma fans that will probably tear through this and be hungry for more, are you guys considering any DLC for the game? Certainly, we already have a couple of ideas and options in mind. First and foremost, we do and are looking forward to hearing um, some of the fans' reactions once the game ships. But it's pretty much a, a done deal that we will continue to provide extra content through DLC. All right, well, thank you very much for this look at the game. When can we pick this up? Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 will be available on September 29th for the PlayStation 3. All right, there you go. If you want it, ask for it, and they will serve it up for you. Thank you, Hayashi-san, for coming by with Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2. And that is your last look at the game because it is due out very shortly, so check back on the site for the review real soon. All right, there's your look at Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2. Game looks pretty sharp, don't you think, uh, Lark? You think so? Good? Uh, well, well. 
Lark's a little distracted. He's uh, fired up Spyborgs for the Wii, which is also coming out this week. And uh, he looks to be uh, smashing some crates. He was just carving through a lot of enemies. I am sorting dudes all over the place. We, <laughs> so uh, we owners will get more than their fair share of sword flinging action games. Uh, so keep your eyes on the site for more on Spyborgs. But right now, we're going to take a look at the early word from Japan. We've got a full crew over at Tokyo Game Show. They're checking out the scene, checking out some games, and waiting for the show to start. Let's see what's up with them. Sophia, Hey folks, hello from Japan. We are all here right now. This is our first night in town and we're in Akihabara, of course. This is like our first stop always when we come down to cover TGS. Uh, and this year we're mixing it up a little. We're going around town, we're looking at some stuff, we're visiting some developers. We're checking to see how Akihabara's changed. There's been a bunch of stuff that we've seen already. And that's just some of what you can look forward to. Came all the way to Japan just to play this game and it doesn't work. Ryan, why does this real iPod have a fake iPod taped over it? Because that's, that's, ever since Steve Jobs got sick, yeah. it's been like, quality's out the window. I know, it's weird. I think he's gone slightly senile. Yeah, I think you're right. This place. <laughs> and that's just some of what you can look forward to, because we got TGS coming up this week, a bunch of different things to cover from there, big announcements, our usual stuff, uh, and some different stuff too. So we've been going around town. What have you guys seen so far? I upgraded my initial D license. This is initial D4. I had to pay five bucks to get my initial D5 card. So that's all I'm going to do tonight is play this game. And then people have been making purchases. Folks that have been kind of notorious. I think Laura from Australia might have something really bad to, to admit to. Tell us how much you spent on plushies. I spent about like 200 bucks just on plush toys. It was awesome. Very nice. This is what happens your first time when you come here. When they said that they were slashing our studio budget, I don't know if this is what they meant. Well, the good news is, is this is all still green screen. We've still got the green screen. It works. On top of the coverage we're going to be doing of Tokyo Game Show, we're going to be sending video into today on the spot all week. And there might even be some surprises in there for you guys. Because it was so popular last year, you guys are going to have a special Saturday edition of On The Spot. Saturday, Saturday. I'm looking for a cell phone. Do you know where I can find one? Uh, I don't know, but I, I would like it to be somewhere right next to where I can find a rice cooker. I would also like to buy it at the same store where I can buy a sexy maid outfit. Do you know the place? Uh, only if the, you can also buy a whole bunch of blank DVDs. Oh, I know where that is. Where? Every store in Tokyo. Saturday, Saturday. Sophia, All right, trivia time, folks. Today we've got a back to school special prize pack. We've got some folders from Featuring Mafia 2, Bioshock 2, Borderlands. Got these sweet message pads with pens. And uh, I'm going to throw in a bonus little tablet here. Anno 1404. Just to give you a handy writing surface. Maybe a place to cut your cheese. All right. If you want one of these packs, answer the following question. How many little sisters are there in Bioshock? That's it. Three correct answers. We'll get three of these sweet packs. Submit your answer on the module on the page or send us an email at onthespot at gamespot.com. And maybe if you're not in school, not interested in these, tune in Thursday when we'll be giving away copies of Dirt 2. That's right, tune in. 
All right, folks, that's going to about do it for today, Tuesday, September 22nd. Don't forget that voting for all-time greatest game hero continues. Uh, and uh, we're in the storied 16 now, and there's some pretty heated matchups, as you might Snake imagine. Snake versus Freeman. The free man. pretty tough, but we all know that the winner is going to be Solid Snake. So vote for him. Do your part. Gordon Freeman, folks. Real heroes don't need cutscenes. For everyone here today on the spot, I'm Chris Waters. And I'm Mark Anderson. See you on Thursday. They need lots of cuts. No, they don't. They need to save the world and just make no bones about it. They need to save the world. Strong, silent times. type. Okay?